Horrocks with AfterburnerStoves.com. As you know, our website is devoted to education about a set group of preparedness items that allow you to cook in the outdoors using naturally occurring fuels that are plentiful from nature, such as sticks, twigs, pine cones, birch bark, sun-dried animal dung. I prefer sticks myself, but hey, whatever floats your clam chowder, I, I suppose. Anyway, the idea here today is to talk about the Stove Tech Rocket Stove. It's cast iron top and the principle of rust. Sounds exciting, right? Dude, we're going to talk about rust? Okay, well the idea is, I've been telling people, hey, your Stove Tech stove will last for generations if you don't let it rust away, right? Well, that led people to believe, well, how easy is it to let it rust away? Well, you know, I never gave it much thought, but rust is really, really slow process. If you think about all the iron in your world that you see rusting decade after decade and it's still there holding up a bridge or it's still there part of a car or it's still there part of a, uh, uh, a mailbox post or something, you'll realize quickly that rust is not that big a deal. Uh, however, thin bodied metal can rust away like a car in Chicago where the, the road salts uh, accelerate the rust process and uh, in a few years you can rust out your fenders on a car, things like that. But we're talking about a thick cast iron construction, so what's the big deal? Is it a big deal? Well, let's take a look. Welcome to the tale of two ovens, Dutch ovens. They're both born on the same day in a factory far, far away. They're both raised up in the same environment, a retail store shelf. They're both adopted into the same family when I purchased them. Thinking I was preparing by getting a couple quality Dutch ovens to cook uh, in the outdoors for my family and in an emergency. Well, I stored them in the garage and uh, I stored them with the lids off so that they wouldn't rust. You know, you've heard the advice, don't put the lid on your Dutch oven or at least put a paper towel in there because moisture can build up. So I deliberately protected them by leaving the lids off. Well, the mice nested in them and it turns out that uh, the mice nested in them for a while and so I had all the mouse urine and feces inside the Dutch ovens. So knowing that the sun is a great uh, uh, ser sterilizer, sanitizer, I put it out in the ultraviolet light of the sun in order to uh, become clean or, you know, sterilized. Then I was going to wash them out, re-season them, everything was going to be fine. Something happened at work and I forgot to get back to the project and they, they stayed out in the weather. And every time I saw them out there, I said, ah... I don't have time right now. I don't have time right now. I'm working on something for work. I'm doing some project. And and after just a few months, I was like, oh, they're a lost cause anyway. Look at all that rust. In fact, have a look at all that rust. It's a pretty serious case of rust. Uh, it looks to the naked eye to be all pitted and uh, damaged and the rust looks kind of thick and like metal is literally coming off of this lid and it's flaking off. So, you know, I had myself convinced that they were a lost cause. But then, I was doing some research uh, about 18 months ago, two years ago on the internet, using Google and, uh, sorry, using YouTube, owned by Google, but I was using YouTube and, of course, <laughs> you're, you're watching YouTube right now, so you understand the value of educating yourself about things using the tool YouTube and, and that's what I was doing and I discovered there are a lot of different processes taught by a lot of different well-meaning individuals on how to restore cast iron they all work so I just found the method that had the least chore involved the least elbow grease the least scrubbing and it was the electrolysis method and there was a, a gentleman on there whose uh, YouTube channel is about uh, uh, eating greens that you find in the wild. I wish I could remember the name of it. May I'll look that up and put it in the comments down below. But uh, uh, he eats wild stuff out of his backyard and out of, I think he's in Florida, and he just finds natural foods. Scrounged, uh, like hunter-gatherer, he's the gatherer part of that duo, and he gathers foods out of the natural environment. And it's a really interesting channel on YouTube. But in the meantime, he taught how to take an, a rusted antique uh, cast iron cookware and how to restore it with the electrolysis method. And basically you take a negative clamp and you put it on your cast iron and then you take the positive clamp and you put it on rebar and you soak both of those items, the rebar and the cast iron, in a vat, a, a, a bucket, a tank containing water with a certain solution of washing soda dissolved in it. 
And uh, what you come up with is a system where the electrons want to flow from the negative, uh, which is the cast iron, to the positive, which is the rebar. And in the process, those electrons coming out of that cast iron knock the rust off in the solution. Cool! <laughs> so I took my Dutch oven that was covered in rust, and I put it in the vat, and I put four rebars wired together with the positive, and I put two uh, clamps with a thick cable, copper, copper cable, to the two sides of my Dutch oven, and I suspended my Dutch oven upside down in between four rebars, uh, and I ran this thing for like 72 hours, and it was clean. All I had to do was, was wash off this black uh, material, and it came out the, the grayish silver color of cast iron, which has not been seasoned. And I was like, oh, this thing's good as new, and it was as good as new. And I re-seasoned it, and here it is. Perfectly restored. No lasting damage, no permanent effect from four years of weather neglect where I just left it out in the snow and the rain and the wind and the sun for four years. And there's no difference in thickness, strength, weight, anything with the one over here, which I have not restored yet. So you can see the contrast and you can see the fact that this thing is, is completely restored. Okay, all my whole point in telling you the tale of two ovens here is that we sometimes think that because we have a cast iron top on our stove tech rocket stove that somehow this thing is susceptible in some way to this evil called rust and it's going to come in and canker the thing away and, and we're going to have nothing left. Guys, it takes decades for rust to do damage to any kind of thickness of cast iron. You're not going to neglect your rocket stove out in the weather for four years. And if you did, you could easily restore it. But you're not going to do that. So if you see a little bit of rust on your rocket stove, don't panic. Check out our video on cleaning the rust off your rocket stove. And use that video, which will be coming up next, to, uh, to clean the, the rust off the rocket stove. To, to oil it to prevent further rust and move on about your life. Your stove tech rocket stove will literally last you your lifetime and your children's lifetime and their children's lifetime if it's taken care of. And you don't have to worry about the rust. Uh, probably the most susceptible thing is the ceramic core and that's only susceptible if you abuse it a lot. Poke it with iron rods, drop it from high heights, things of that nature, or put out the fire with water and cause a thermal shock. Don't do that stuff and your stove tech stove is going to last a good long time. Notice. The difference is only in the fact that these are still covered in rust and this has been restored in season, but there's no difference. This thing is a full strength Dutch oven. Okay? Stove Tech Rocket Stove is available now at AfterburnerStoves.com. It's a way to cook with sticks, twigs, and pine cones forever. Pick one up today, save 10% by typing in SAVE at checkout. S-A-V-E saves you another 10% off our already guaranteed lowest online prices. Have a great day guys. Thanks for watching. Metal under tension.